<laughs> what would you say is the key to success with Carwell? I think it's this blend that um, we came up with, which is... What would you say is the key to success? I will cut that. We won't. We'll keep that keep in. That in. <laughs> I'll keep that in. <laughs> what would you say is the key to success with Carwell? Obviously, we talked about like reasonably priced cars and uh -huh. supercars and presenting style. Mm -hmm. What's What do you think the key is? Okay, so when we started the channel, I think some of the other channels that were large were caught a little bit napping. And it's because mm. mainly they were, um, they had magazines and so yeah. they're focused on magazines and they did it as a sideline. And then mm. we came in and put a lot of focus into it. Mm. And I think it's this blend that um, we came up with, which is you've got all the information that you get from the serious car magazine. So everything you need to know about the car is there, right? So it appeals to people who are car enthusiasts and serious. But then we did it in a light-hearted way. Mm. So the idea is that I'm your car expert, mate, and we, I'm going to show mm. you around this car. I'm going to mm. have a bit of fun while we're doing it. It's not all dead serious. Mm. Let's have a bit of a laugh. Like, we'd actually mm. talk um, rather than being some kind of, like, officious motoring mm. journalist. Got to make, you know, got to make it very all sensible and worthy. So we had that element, which makes it a bit more accessible. Mm. So when um, people who have a loose interest in cars or they're researching mm. to buy their next car... And it doesn't want to feel like work, you know, oh, I've got to have to research, oh, it's like boring, it's, I'm just trying to get the facts. It, it Make it a bit more enjoyable. So people watch it for longer, more likely to watch mm. another video, increases your watch time. Mm. And um, so the algorithm mm. promotes you more. And then we added this other element, which was more on the entertainment side, yeah. which includes the drag racing, having mm. a bit of laugh drag racing. And that, that was the thing that really blew up really mm. help elevate the channel to do these halo drag races, which um, the, the um, most viewed one we've done is, um, I think it's like 22 million views, which compared to like Baby Shark, do, 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 do is nothing. Mm. But, mm. you know, in the car world, it's mm. quite large. Yeah, yeah. And that was a sheer on against a Red Bull Formula One car. Mm. With your work experience, lad. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you've seen it with Dave. <laughs> with Dave, Dave, the work experience, Come on, get lad. clean the car, Dave. That's not a very good job, mate. In actual fact, David Coulthard is one of my all-time favourite F1 drivers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very charismatic. I, I quite like Dave. Very good commentator. Yeah, he's well. very good, very clear, and he's really nice to work with, quite humble. What makes drag racing, though, so popular on YouTube? when in reality, certainly in the UK, it's not that popular. We've only got one track, and we we? Santa Pod, and I think it's Marsden shut down. We, we were actually trying to film a drag race yeah. between a Tesla and what was the other car? Uh, uh, Nissan was, uh, Skyline. Yeah, Skyline. Yeah. yeah, and we couldn't find a track to do it on. We had to book a, an airport somewhere. What, are you telling me you're a competitor now? <laughs> <laughs> Let's shut this down. <laughs> <laughs> it was more about gaining sponsorship and uh -huh. how you gain sponsorship to uh, promote uh, yourself in racing or whatever you want to do. So, so we that wrapped was the, the Tesla with um, public.com uh -huh. and, and then we raced it against yeah. another car. Okay. So don't worry, we're not coming for you. <laughs> <yet>. <laughs> okay, so you say, like, yeah, there's, there's one track, mm. Santa Pod. Mm. But everyone who's got a car has accelerated it hard. Mm. And they've, you know, and if you're sort of into cars, you've probably tried to race someone at the lights. Obviously, you're not supposed to, mm. but you know, to get ahead, put your foot down. How does it go? But that is a start gantry, isn't it? The lights. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's also the thing as well, it's like top trumps, isn't it? It's like everyone who's into cars, mm. how much power have I got? How fast is it? Is it faster than my mate's car? Or is it faster than the car that my mate says is faster than mine? Mm. You know, it's all that kind of thing. So it, it's quite a simple concept. And what you also get is side by side racing, mm. which. Unless you, unless it's motorsport, you can't really do. Mm. You know, you can time cars mm. around a track, but they're not side by side mm. racing. And the way we do it, it's sort of like it seems like I'm racing like with my co-host mm. or other co-hosts. Like mm. we're, it's me against him. Mm. Mm. But actually, what we really try to do is make the cars perform the best that they can, so that you're actually getting a fair representation of what these cars do. So it's mm. not actually about us as drivers which motorsport more is mm. it's once again back to that thing about being blending proper car journalism mm. with um entertainment to show you these are how if you get the perfect launches these how these cars perform well going mm. back to obviously with uh, red bull and david Coulthard for that video how do you get so many cars firstly to review but also these top cars and these top guys to come and uh, do these videos with you um okay so Obviously, it's, we've got the reach. 
So we've got the reach. Um, mm. Car manufacturers want to, um, they, they, part of their marketing strategy is to work with journalists to review their products. And because we have uh, a huge reach, they want us to review their product. And do, that's do, how we get access to the manufacturer's cars. You have to be careful about what you say to uh, about the cars, because then maybe in the future, the manufacturer might not give you the cars that you want. I think this is a problem that if you're small and you're starting out, mm. you have. Now, because I worked on a major national magazine, mm. I had the relationships with the PRs, mm. so they would lend me the cars. And because I worked on a magazine which had, a, you know, back in the day when I first started on it, it had like 100,000 um, issues a week. And so you had the audience, so you could be, um, you didn't you, you didn't have to um, count out to the um, PRs. Mm. You said what you thought about the car, and that's why you mm. had the readers, because you were honest. Mm. And I was able to just translate, transfer that straight across mm. to the YouTube channel, because the PRs knew that I said what I thought. Mm. They, they knew it, and, and so it's just, oh, that's what Matt does. And There's, you're probably fair with what you say versus a, a hater. Yeah, so one of the things is as well, like nothing's perfect, right? Mm. So we have this thing in our videos where we have five bad things about this car and five cool things. Mm. And at first, they're like, oh, I don't like the bad things. I'm like, the things is, like the bad things are true. And they also add credibility to the good things. Mm -hmm. And if I give a um, uh, give an overall positive review to your car, then people will believe it because mm. I've pointed out some negatives. It doesn't sound like I'm just trying to sell you this car, mm. which we had to be very careful with, with CarWow compared to when I was on Auto Express because CarWow makes money by people using the site and mm. buying this and selling their car through us. So we mm. need to be completely impartial. Otherwise, mm. people would be looking to go, well, you know, you're just trying to sell this car. Mm. Mm. I'd seem more like a salesman than if I was working for a traditional magazine. Mm. Sometimes what I like about your five bad things is that you'll say, oh, boot space is terrible. It's only... 300 litres, for example. But if you compare that with such and such, yeah. actually it's bigger. So you almost sort of sandwich the bad news yeah. with some good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's basically like what I was saying. It's like you're just trying to explain it mm. as it is. And and the, the manufacturers find it hard. They can't really criticise if it's mm. a fact. And the, the engineers, and they know the weaknesses of their product. Mm. And you can, mm. you know, their, their job is to try and spin that out. But mm. it's very hard for them to argue unless you're making completely inaccurate claims or you're being unfair or you're just factually incorrect. Mm. I quite like that comparison, the way you do it like that with another car, because, you know, when you talk about figures, sometimes it's quite hard to compare figures with figures because yeah. you can't really visualise it. But you know how big the boot is in your Mini yeah. or whatever you've got, so it's a good comparison, and I think it brings it to life. Um, the other obsession you seem to have is storage of Class A's. <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> I see that come up in a few yeah. of your videos. Oh, there's a space for your cash. <laughs> <laughs> that does happen sometimes. So once again, that that comes back to like chatting with your mate. Like you'd yeah. have a bit of a laugh. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I don't know why that is. Maybe that's growing up in Warsaw again. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it made me chuckle though. And I, I think that's the co comedic part of the videos that mm. I, I certainly like. Yeah. You know, it works very, very well. So, th And that's once again, it doesn't seem like it's... It's an influencer's review of a car mm. because no marketing department would ever sign that off. Mm. There's actually a really funny um, th uh, little anecdote from Twitter PR, right? So I did a review of the GR Yaris before before I bought it. And I mm. started the video, I mean, this will sound weird, by actually having a wee. So I'm, I'm there <laughs> having a wee in the bushes. And I come... And I just well, and they're videoing you having a wee. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, is that bizarre. good for watch time <laughs> it seemed to work Did it? it's the most watched video of that car in the world it'd be finished well, in a minute yeah yeah so i know what you mean people yeah. dropping out but, but maybe that like, i've never seen this before i'm gonna carry on watching but there was this thing right the the toyota pr because obviously it's run out of toyota's mm. japanese and they have a slightly different culture to mm. us and like slightly. they're they're like we like watson son's video but why does he have to start it by urinating this is very disrespectful and then like toyota's uk pr have to explain to them, well he's sort of like what he does it's how he gets some of the views and all look at the positive yeah. things he said about the video. And I, I think, why, why did I do that? It's just ridiculous. And some of the things I do, I know are ridiculous and they make me cringe in retrospect. Mm -hmm. But there's also an element with YouTube. It's not just about watch time. People want to expect the unexpected. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm going to review a car. You know, I'm going to do this. You know, I'm going to show the boot space, blah, blah, blah. But I might say something mm -hmm. that's a little bit like, oh, no. Or mm -hmm. did he say that? Mm -hmm. It kind of brings your attention back to the video as well if you're tuning out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's 
that it's just to make it a little bit more varied or interesting mm. for people who do regularly watch because you know car review after car review after car review they it's quite a templated mm. um uh, format really mm. have so, you ever been asked sorry have you ever been asked to um take down uh, a video yes so what's that story okay have you so, taken it down though no <laughs> there you go so it was a it was another japanese manufacturer yeah. and it was in the uk i showed um, a picture of their car for the intro and i said it looked like a, a cat having a poo and then we showed a picture of a cat having a poo and it was the same color as the car anyway um the md of that company went crazy Did and it? like we're gonna you know take it down we're not gonna work with you mm. we're not gonna work with the business mm. uh, but the ceo was like no i might operate separately we can't do that if you decide that you don't want to work with us um i think that's a commercially silly thing to mm. do Anyway, we didn't take it down. They still worked with us, but they won't work with me. Mm. Um, but we translated that into Japanese, <laughs> and um, and it's and it's the biggest, it's the most watched review of that car. Well, so after they markets. had an issue with it, then you translated it. Yeah, we just did that anyway. But <laughs> oh, that's what okay. we'd have done. Okay. So we carried on with what we'd right. normally do. I thought you doubled down. <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't double down, but we didn't back off. We go. This is what yeah. we do. And I was actually, po I like this car. I was mm. positive about it. And it, but it's that once again that element of what's he going to do at the beginning of the video to mm. hook people in, and that that other element that well if he says that about it, this is not pay 